Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakudash. Double honor to my apostles, elders, and great millstone, the men that taught me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, that's teaching this word, the truth and sincerity. And peace and blessings to the rest of the elect of the house of Israel that's scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. Today's lesson of discourse is our power was taken from us. Our power was stripped from us. Our, we lost our might, our glory, our nationality, our language, our customs and traditions. It was stripped from us. Okay? And this lesson was inspired from one of the elder brothers in Chicago. I forgot his name. Forgive me, brother. But we was talking on a chat. And he made a point about feeling powerless and how our, how, how our power, our might was taken from us. Okay? And um, the spirit hit me. It clicked this scene from Thor when Odin had took Thor's power from him, from his foolish behavior and comments. Okay? Just like our power and our might were stripped from us from our foolish behaviors and comments. And I'm going to give some commentary on this video with some scripture uh, with, with some scriptures backing it up because it's all prophetic. Alright? Forgive me for the noise in the background. It's raining and I'm in my uh, car in my chariot. Okay? But um, Lord's will, you're edified and I pray and hope that this video don't get taken down because I'm using, uh, you know, their content. But I'm not using it for money purposes or financial gain, only for edification to the Lord's sheep. Okay? Let's get into it. To my home. You cannot need to protect your friends. How can you hope to protect the kingdom? Get into the healing room. No! There won't be a kingdom to protect if you're afraid to act. The Jotuns must learn to fear me, just as they once feared you. That's pride and vanity talking, not leadership. So now, as you can see in the video, Thor and um, Odin is going back and forth and, and having an argument. And as you can see, Thor is murmuring against his father. He's murmuring back talking to Odin because Thor was acting like a novice acting like a child a spoiled brat going to war with people that he had no business to go into war with when you watch the movie so now let's get into the scriptures this is the book of songs chapter 82 verse 6 I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. So now, the Bible refers, Salakia, the Bible refers to the Israelites, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, from North, Central, and South America, and the Mexicans, you are the Israelites. You are the gods that the Bible is referring to. Okay? Because your name, Israel, goes back to the Hebrew, Yasha Allah. Yah meaning he, Shah meaning prince, Allah meaning power or God. Ye are the princes of God. Ye are the princes of the power on earth. Okay? Because when you look up the word God in the Hebrew, it means Allah, which means God or judge. So the Most High refers to his people, you so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native American Indians from North, Central, and South America as the gods of earth. And all of you are the children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. 
Okay, so you shall die like men. And the reason why you are being gunned down, the reason why ye, you are dying from drugs, dying from alcohol poison, you're dying from overdosing on medication in these pharmaceutical drugs, you're dying from bad diets and bad eating habits, you're dying from all manners of living, you are plagued uh, from all types of sicknesses, all type of psychological uh, sickness, all types of diseases. You you ye fill up the uh, penitentiaries. The reason why you're going through all these things is because ye are feeling the wrath and the judgment of the Most High. Ye are feeling the wrath and the judgment of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. You're being punished. Okay? You are being punished for disobeying and murmuring against the Most High. Just like Thor is murmuring against his father Odin. Okay? This is the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 27. It says, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. And this is Yahweh speaking. Okay? This is number 14, verse 26. And Yahweh, when you see Lord in all caps, that's the Heavenly Father speaking. That's Yahweh speak unto Moses and to Aaron saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? Okay? The Israelites during the time of Moses in the wilderness was murmuring against the Most High. Just like Mo Moses, I mean, just like Thor was murmuring against Odin. He was calling him out his name. He was raising his voice to his father. Just like Israel murmurs against the Most High today. Asking why God is keeping us oppressed. Why is God doing this? Why is God letting the babies die? Why is our people strung out of junk? Why is God doing this? Why is God doing that? But you forgetting what you're doing against the Most High. Which is sinning. Which sin means the transgression of the laws. The breaking of the commandments. You're doing all men as an evil against the Most High. And do you wonder why you being punished? You wonder why you were stripped of your power. You wonder why you stripped of your might and your glory. Why the other nations are at the head and you at the tail. Why you busting your ass every day and got nothing to show for it? Because you did evil in the sight of the Most High. Just like uh, Thor did evil in the sight of Odin. Okay? So it says, Say unto them, As truly as I live, say of the Lord, As ye have spoken in my ears, So will I do to you. Okay? So just like you speak evil against the Most High, the Most High is going to do evil unto you. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in a day of judgment. Because our people think that the Most High doesn't hear their cries. They think that the Most High doesn't hear them talking shit. The Most High don't hear them scoffing and slandering their, his prophets. You scoffing and slandering the righteous. Who the Lord set up to teach his word and speak his prophecies. And you don't think the Lord don't hear you speaking against him. So it says, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Alright, let's get back to the clip. If God 
forgotten everything I taught you. Afraid to act. The Jotuns must learn to fear me, just as they once feared you. That's pride and vanity talking, not leadership. You've forgotten everything. He said, that's pride and vanity that's talking. That's not leadership. And what does the scripture say about pride and vanity? This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 16. Uh, I think it's 18. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So pride, you uplifting yourself. The greater your downfall is going to be. When you lift yourself up, when you highly exhort yourself, you thinking that you better than the most high or you could, you're doing things without the most high. And that's where the Most High jack your ass up even more. All right? The Most High brings you down even more. And we got plenty of examples of that. Mike Tyson. Um, Prince. Michael Jackson. And many of the entertainers. Allen Iverson. Many of the entertainers, actors, actresses, athletes. That put themselves on a pedestal and the most high shut their careers down or make them look like fools or even less than what their glory was. All right. And the other one is. Proverbs 6 and 16. These six things do the Lord hate. Yea, seven are abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. All right? So the Most High hates a proud look. He hates a proudful nigga. All right? And this is part of the reason why our power was stripped. Because Israel... Has great pride, man. They don't think that the Most High wakes them up every day. They don't give praise and be thankful for the Most High waking them up. Giving them food in their stomach. Giving them their daily bread and clothes on their back. And keeping a roof over their head. Look at Mayweather. Look at O.J. Simpson. Look at all these so-called uh, top athletes and actors. They don't give praise to the Creator. They think they did it of themselves, not knowing that the Most High gave them the spirit and gave them, gave them the spirit first and foremost, and gave them a special and unique uh, uh, spirit than the rest of the nations that makes them stand out more than other people because the Most High said that you are peculiar people. You are a special people unto himself above all nations. All right. Everything I taught you. But a warrior's patience. While you wait and be patient, the nine realms laugh at us. The old ways are done. You'd stand giving speeches while Asgard falls. You are a vain, greedy, cruel boy. And you are an old man and a fool. See? And what does the scripture... <laughs> As I watch, the scriptures just pop into my mind, man. This is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. It says, Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And Thor was being lifted up with pride, man. All right? Thor was being lifted up in pride. Because he's bad, he's good at what he's do. He's a mighty man. 
but he forgot that this was a gift that was bestowed upon him. And just like the gift was given onto him, the gift could be taken away from him. And that's the same thing that, like Israel, us being a special people, us being a holy people, a sacred people, that's what the Most High gave us. And just like he gave it to us, he can take it away from us. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, I think 16. Oh, 32. But this is good. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, provoked they to him to anger. And that's what y'all did. Y'all pissed the most high off. You worshiping other gods of wood and stone. You worshiping idols and not worshiping the creator. And this is why you being punished. All right. You're transgressing the laws of the heavenly father. Being uh, 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 all man is a wickedness, whether it's idolatry, whether it's sorcery or witchcraft, whether it's adultery. Whether it's uh, sodomy, whether it's effeminate, extortionists, proud, blasphemers, and all the uh, breaking the dietary laws, the civil laws, the moral laws, not loving your neighbors as yourself, be it whoremongers, and the list goes on. All right? So this is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 36. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone. So the Mosah, because he remembers the covenant with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he promised that he won't utterly destroy the house of Israel, but leave a remnant that he will leave to, and protect. And they will always follow his ways. They will always serve him. And they will always be uh, in his sight. But the scriptures say, where he sees that, that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. All right. was a fool to think you were ready father hey! Thor Odin son she didn't show you he said he has the voice of many waters it's that authoritative austere manly voice man that's why the scriptures say cry aloud spare not lift up that voice like a trumpet all right you got to project your voice, man. This ain't the choir. This ain't the Christian church where you speak it all soft-spoken. You got to speak with authority as bold as a lion and authoritative, man. Like you know what you're saying and believe what you're talking about. Man of your king, through your arrogance and stupidity, you have opened these peaceful realms and innocent lives to... You have betrayed the express command of your king. Through your arrogance and stupidity, you have opened these peaceful realms and innocent lives to the horror and desolation of war. You are unworthy of these realms, unworthy of your title. You are unworthy. The loved ones you have betrayed. I now take from you your power. In the name of So you see he took away his power. The Holy Scripture comes to mind.
Jeremiah 23, verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? So showing you the most I took that power, which is the knowledge, wisdom, understanding. All right. He took the word, the words from us, man. Just like Odin took the power from Thor. We were stripped of the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and we was left bearing throughout slavery and throughout shit. Even today, our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The scriptures say we have gone into captivity because we have not knowledge. But the water Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, Kal Halal Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, for him leaving a remnant. Okay? That was going to repent. That was going to wake up from the um the valley of dry bones and receive the word, receive the breath. All right? Receive the living waters. And they was going to stand up as a, a, a exceeding great army. And they was going to confess the names of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah until he returned. All right? Cast Thor out of Asgard, just like the Lord cast us out of Israel. What's that? There's a couple of scriptures come to mind, but this is the main one. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and then ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So it says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. This is not talking about physical Egypt, because Egypt is connected to Israel. Okay? The land masses are connected. So you can easily travel from Egypt to Israel on foot or chariot. You don't need a ship to go to Israel from Egypt. So what is this talking about? This is talking about spiritual Egypt, spiritual Sodom, spiritual Babylon. All right. Again, with ships by the way whereof I spake on to thee. And that goes into the transatlantic slave trade. And even when the Native Americans from North Central and South America, they was a part of the slave trade as well. Okay. Because Christopher Columbus was is is documented that he was taking indigenous Indians, indigenous Americans, okay, back to Europe as presents, okay, for the royalty. He was taking them back as they was like they was fucking pets or presents. And these are people, these are men, women, and children. So it says the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. See what again? The land of Israel. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So we was going to come to this land known as the Americas, a.k.a. Babylon, a.k.a. Sodom and Gomorrah, a.k.a. Spiritual Egypt. Okay. For bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you, meaning nobody's gonna redeem us. No one is gonna save us. Except Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. What's another one? I think it's Baruch four. I must speed read this. Baruch 4 7. 
for ye provoke him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the Most High. Ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. For when she saw the wrath of the Most High come upon you, she said, Hearken, O ye that dwell upon Zion. God have brought upon me great mourning, for I saw the captivity of the sons of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them, with joy that I nourished them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Okay? And this is Togo, that was symbolic of Israel, the land of Israel, speaking to the children of Israel. The Most High cast us from the land. What's another one? Baruch. I believe two towards the end. Baruch chapter 2 verse 32. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck. Let's talk about the elect because all Israel is not going to do this. And return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember their, the ways of their fathers which sit before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promise, which is the land of Israel, with an oath of their, unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. Okay? So just like Odin cast Thor out of Asgard, the Most High cast us out of the land of Israel. And we're going back when Yahweh returns. And he puts us back in the land. This hammer, if it be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. And then what, he what did he say to the hammer? Symbolically the word, which is wisdom. He said, if they be found worthy, they shall possess the Thor of hammer. So... You like you, like the scriptures say, bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. Only the elect is worthy of this word. Only the remnant is going to receive this word, the one third. <coughs> and the 144,000, which is the government body. They was the only ones that was preordained. They was already uh, uh, written that they was going to get this word and they was going to keep this word. All right. And pretty much that's it, man. We were stripped of our power. But at the end, we're going to get it back. We are living in a time where we're getting it back now. We're living in the end. Esau's end, which is the Caucasian race. And how we know that we're living in his end? Because the elect is waking up throughout the four corners of the earth. This gospel is being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. And that's how we know we at the end. But pretty much that's it. I pray and hope that y'all was edified. I pray that this video stays up. Because this is not for financial gain or monetary gain. This is only for edification and ed educational purposes. I pray and hope that you lambs and sheep was edified I'm going to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh by Shibya Shai by Shiva Kakudash till next time I say Shalom